absolutely the the key um, requirement of a vaccine to be licensed into the general public is that it's safe and the safety data is recorded in the phase one the small trial where they're only looking at safety and then into the big efficacy studies where they're looking at safety and whether it's protected so a vaccine would never be licensed if it was not safe there are then mechanisms to carry on monitoring safety throughout the lifetime of the vaccine so they they anyone who's been vaccinated will be it'll be recorded and any adverse events are associated with infect with with the vaccination will be recorded and returned back to its central databases and that that ensures that this monitoring is kept so vaccines yes are safe So as well as an active ingredient, so there will be an immunogen, um, so the thing which triggers off our immune response, um, there are also um, some stabilising agents, some preservatives, and some of these will help keep the vaccine um, active while it's transported and while it's stored. The main reason is that they are still in developing stage, their defense system is not yet ready and these diseases can be quite fatal for them. So what you are doing is, it's almost like a fire safety drill. So what you are doing is, you when you have a safety drill, you don't light the building on fire. You just sound the alarm, you go bing, 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 and then you are supposed to get out of the building, know where the extinguishers are, use them as per the requirement. So this is what we are doing. This is the fire alarm that tells you, that teaches you, like if you have this, uh, this particular pathogen, how is your defense system going to work and you stimulate it. And then when, hopefully not, <laughs> if there is a real fire, you are ready to fight. Okay, so it's, it's just, almost like a fire drill and you don't want your child to be infected it's, it's as simple as that so there are going to be a number of reasons why vaccines don't work in all people so some of it might be that you get exposed to the infection too soon after vaccination i think we see this with the covid vaccine that a lot of the infections that happen during the clinical trials happen within the first 10 days of the of the vaccination and that's because your immune system hasn't had time to build up the protective memories. So it's important to remember that you're not safe the day you have a vaccine. You need to leave some time for your immune system to build up. So that some of it is that it's just not had time to develop yet. Some of it will be that some people, a small group of people, may not be able to produce an immune response in quite the right way. It may be that they don't recognise what's in the vaccine or that their immune system is very subtly different to, to the kind of general populations and this means they're not protected as, in quite the same way. And the final thing is when the virus or the pathogen changes shape over time and the immune system, the memory that you've trained are no longer recognised in the new version of the virus. And we see this very prominently in influenza virus where the virus is changing year by year and we have to change the vaccine to keep on meeting what the circulating virus is. Vaccines protect everybody. Um, so traditionally, we vaccinate children um, against a range of different diseases, but many of us will have had vaccinations when we've gone on holiday, for example. And these vaccines protect us against pathogens that we haven't come into contact before, but they also protect those around us, the, our community, our family. So um, vaccines really um, do protect us all. It, it, it's beneficial for you and for others so that's why we need to promote it and it's also a way where you reduce the cost on the healthcare system it's, it's an injection that can definitely because say for example in uk and france it's the government that pays so the more you reduce the better it is <laughs> um vaccines are are made in a number of different ways and it depends a lot on what type of um, infectious disease you're targeting. So some of the older vaccines that we have come from are made by um, having grown up a bacteria and then grown it in a such a way that it's no longer infectious and these are called attenuated bacterial vaccines and in those ones they come from you grow these, these bacteria up like the BCG bacteria but it, it's no longer able to infect people. There are other vaccines which are based on a toxin, a poison that the bacteria makes. So they, the bacteria that causes the disease tetanus 
it produces a toxin and that's what paralyzes people and the vaccine is a version of that toxin which has been inactivated with a chemical so you get an immune response against it without being um without it being toxic or affecting your nerves anymore and then some of the more modern vaccines are based on taking individual components, individual genes of the viruses, isolating them from the virus and then moving them into the vaccine manufacturing platform. The new COVID vaccines, what they've done is they've taken a single gene from the virus and they've moved that into the vaccine platform. So in the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, they've taken the gene for the spike protein, which is how the coronavirus gets into cells and put it in another virus called an adenovirus, which has been inactivated, and that's what delivers the material to the body's cells. Before any vaccines are tested on people, they're always tested on animals for, um, for safety and, and for efficacy. But there are many stages to um, a clinical trial. First of all, um, it's important to make sure that vaccines are safe, and this is done with a small number of, of people. Then um, you start to look at whether um, there's any benefit to the vaccine. So do the vaccines produce any um, antibody responses or any other T cell responses, for example? And then later parts of the trial, you look at in a situation where you've got a lot of the pathogen around, is someone who's vaccinated better off than someone who isn't? So is there a, a, a reduced chance of somebody who's vaccinated um, getting the disease. So do they actually protect against the disease?